This is the Ansonia Sun Watch from the 1920s. Apparently somebody bought this one in Washington DC in 1927. It's a pocket-sized portable sundial. You open this thing up, pull out the Nomon, line it up just right, and never miss the bus again. It has a compass at the bottom and three different dial scales for use at different latitudes. There's a rectangle around the edge, an octagon, and a circle in the middle. It's got another little scale next to the compass and then a big little chart of stuff. They got it all. I'm just a simple man and I don't know nothing about nothing, but I do know that sundials aren't portable. You gotta position it on the ground just right with the angles and such, and then the scale you use has to be specifically calibrated for your longitude and latitude. So how could you ever make such a thing portable? Well, if you know your longitude and latitude, all the angles and such really boil down to finding north. And this thing's got a compass, so I guess it could work. Mine's in good condition. It's a bit corroded here on the bottom, but man, this thing is tiny. You want to know what else is tiny? The original instructions manual fits right in there. I scanned it so the internet can have it forever. Click the links down there. It's the tickless timepiece. It says, sun and compass tells the time and guide your steps in every climb. Every climb? That's not really true at all. Like, this is the only type of clock where the climb actually makes a difference. Every climb? Come on now. The Ansonia Clock Company didn't invent the portable sundial. This is a variation on a very old design called the diptych sundial. It opens like a clamshell and the bottom has a compass so you can orient it right. There's usually a string that acts as the gnomon. Hey. Turn the compass to line up the N and the string casts a shadow telling you the time. This one here I got at a yard sale in my town. I think it came from France. This other one I got on eBay. I thought it might be a real antique based on the pictures of the inside, but the outside is all wrong. Looks like it came from a museum gift shop somewhere. These things are cute, but really it needs some work if you want it to be useful for modern time telling. The positioning of a sundial is a pretty touchy business. The compass helps you point in the right direction, but an accurate sundial scale needs to be fine-tuned specifically for your latitude, plus an adjustment for your longitudinal position within the time zone, plus another adjustment for the calendar date. This is complicated, but the Ansonia Sunwatch actually does it pretty well. One thing that helps is that this is very specifically designed to be used within the continental United States. That's a pretty big area, of course, but the latitude across the U.S. only really goes from about 25 to 50. The three different scales on it correspond to different latitudes. You just pick whichever is closest, 35, 40, or 45. And the case has a handy chart here, in case you don't know your latitude offhand. I'm near New York, and it says latitude 40, so I'm going to use the 40 scale. And the pointy thing, that's the gnomon. It has tiny markings on it to make sure you pull it up just right. Over here it's got a mark that you use with the 40 scale, and on the other side are marks for 35 and 45. So for New York City, I'm going to pull it up to the 40 degree line. Next you use the compass to point in the right direction. You need this thing to be pointing north. We actually want true north, which is slightly different from the magnetic north. And the list of cities gives you the appropriate correction in the VAR column. For New York, it says to adjust by 10 degrees to the west. So I point the compass at 10 west. And now we read the time where the shadow hits the dial. Well, I guess I should bring it outside. Here's what it looks like when I try it. The instructions don't explain this, but I'm pretty sure you're supposed to use the edge of the shadow where the pointy point of the gnomon is. Looks like 1230, all right. Now we need to make two adjustments, one for our location inside the time zone and one for the calendar date. The time zone adjustment is because time zones are pretty wide on the map. Like the position of the sun at any given time in Boston is actually pretty different from the same time in Louisville. I mean, Louisville. Louisville. So look up New York on the chart and it says subtract four minutes. Okay, so my reading really should be 1226. And then the calendar date correction, the last column over there got you covered. This was on August 21st, so that's a plus three minutes. So my final answer is 12.29 p.m. And how did the sun watch do? Well, the actual time when this picture was taken, according to my phone, was 1.19 p.m. But we forgot the last thing. The instructions don't say it, but they didn't use daylight saving time in the 1920s. And it's August now, so we gotta add one more hour. That makes my final reading 1.29 p.m. I'm off by 10 minutes. That's pretty good, right? 
I tried this thing over and over again at different times a day, and the accuracy is generally within 10 to 20 minutes of the clock time, which is pretty good, I guess. The scales are pretty rough, so it's hard to read with very much precision, and my magnetic correction of 10 degrees is probably a bit out of date, too. Did you know the Earth's magnetic pole moves over time? And in New York, they say it may have drifted up to 3 degrees over the last century. And what do you know, I tried adjusting the compass angle to compensate. I tried to go about 12 degrees instead of 10, and this swings the answer by about 20 minutes. So maybe this thing was really more accurate back then. This one obviously is meant to be used in the continental United States, but they made other ones for different regions. Here's a picture from the Cambridge University Museum of one made for Great Britain. You can see the list of cities is all different, and the UK latitudes are quite a bit further north than the US, so the scales there are for 51, 54, and 57. This kind of basic design is actually very old. Here's one from the museum at Oxford, made around 1600 for use in Europe, and it has the same basic setup. They even got a list of corrections for different cities here, and a calendar with more corrections on the other side. So the Ansonia Clock Company wasn't exactly breaking new ground here. And it's a bit of a gimmick that a clock company would even make such a thing. But it was probably cheap and it's made of brass. Ansonia loved brass. Would you mind a brief story about the strange history of the Ansonia Clock Company? It all started in the early 1800s with the Ansonia Brass Company, later called the American Brass and Copper Company, located in Ansonia, Connecticut. They started making clocks and eventually that spun off into a separate business, the Ansonia Clock Company. These guys were a fairly successful clock company from like the 1880s to the 1920s. They made wall clocks, watches, everything. People still collect them. The Great Depression pretty much killed the company though. In 1929, they ran out of money and they ended up selling off all their factory equipment to an unlikely buyer. This guy. I'm not making this up. The Ansonia Clock Company's manufacturing apparatus was put on ships and relocated to Moscow to jumpstart the Soviet Union's clock and watch industry, specifically the Polyot Company, which was the main producer of watches for Stalin's first five-year plan. This was basically just a rebrand of the Ansonia Clock Company. So the Ansonia Clock Company left these parts a long time ago, but Ansonia, Connecticut is still a real place, and actually it's right near where I live, so I had to check it out. The American Brass Company buildings are all still there, just barely. It's actually a huge area, all fenced off and crumbling. I didn't want to trespass, but lots of people have. This is the main entrance, which has American Brass carved into the stone, but it's covered with ivy now. No signs, no historical marker, no nothing. It's a shame, really, considering what a big deal this place used to be. I mean, the city of Ansonia is named after Anson Phelps, the guy who started this company. When I was looking around the site, a lady driving by stopped and yelled out her window, What are you guys looking at? What is that place? This is the whole reason your city exists, lady. At least put up a plaque.